Hey guys, so it is a misty morning here with a little bit of actual rain. I wasn't expecting that. Plan on doing a garden tour this morning, so today is going to be a rainy day garden tour here in May. I cannot believe that. Um, generally here in Southern California, we get May gray and June, bl June gloom. Uh, we didn't have that last year, and that was our first May and June here at this house. And so I thought maybe they didn't get that inland like this, but... Here it is, and this whole May almost has been this way. So the first thing I wanna do is actually update you um, on something that usually is updated on Next Level Homestead, our other channel. I'll put a link to that up here. But this week we didn't have a video on Next Level Homestead because yours truly lost a lot of the footage. Actually, I didn't lose the footage. I deleted the wrong memory card. But for those of you who watch Next Level Homestead, um, I just wanted to give you, since we're here in this area, a quick update, and maybe some of you who don't watch Next Level Homestead because you never even knew we had it. It's our second channel where we're kind of building everything around here. That's not necessarily the gardening part of it in terms of how to plant this and that and grow this and that, but how to create all of these gardens or me creating all of these gardens. So the first thing, our cottage chimney is almost done. I had to quit yesterday. I could have finished it, but if you notice, there's some blank spots there. Uh, just with this wet weather, the, the liquid nails was not setting. And so I had bricks sliding, falling off. So I'm like, okay, forget it. So then I thought, okay, what can I do that the weather wouldn't matter for? Well, I'll show you what I did. Are you ready to be absolutely shocked? Thatch. Take a look at that, you guys. I got almost to the top. Trimmed the bottom. Just take it in. I know we've all been waiting for this for a very long time. Oh, you know how excited I am about this. Look, at this. it's looking like an actual cottage. I mean, here we go. It's it's gonna be, this is gonna be done, except for the bottom part where it's still open. I'm still deciding how to close that off. But everything else, for the most part, it's gonna be finished. The roof was not as difficult as I thought it would be. There's some tedious parts. And on the next Homestead video, I'll take you through kind of the process of putting that all up there. But now let's get on with the actual garden tour. And since we're in the cottage garden, we'll start right here. And as you can see, things are starting to fill in a lot from where they were on last month's tour, which was the 30th of April. This is the 28th of May. On the last video, I had an oleander here that I had to remove that is gone and the cherry tree is now in its place. I planted the lilac right here. And fairly soon, I've got to get the border in here. These are just wood pieces to uh, show where that border is going to be, but I will be putting in the lawn that goes all the way around the front of the garden just as a border between the driveway and the actual flowers, uh, but also a place where when people park on the driveway, they'll have a place to get out if they need to, a little wider spot. Now, a few of you actually, when I mentioned doing a lawn before, and I'm not the biggest proponent of lawns, especially if you have a small space garden, um, but a lot of you actually mentioned micro clover, actually sowing that in with the grass seed. And I had never even heard of that before, micro clover. Um, but apparently it's just this miniature clover. And what it does is it stays green, even with minimal water. So it makes your lawn look green all the time, even when the grass isn't at its best. It doesn't take as much water, like I mentioned. Clover is a legume, so it actually will hold nitrogen in its roots to share with the grass to keep it fertilized so you're not putting on a bunch of fertilizer all the time. So that'll be coming soon. I'm gonna be putting drip under the lawn to water the lawn with drip. So we're not using a bunch of extra water spraying everywhere and evaporating or running off. So uh, that will be on the Homestead channel. So if you wanna see something like that, definitely go over there. Um, while we're down here, I started with the stonework here for the steps instead of the pieces of wood that go up. I'm gonna be replacing it with these, with this stone. Now that stone was actually here when we moved here. It's actually bordering a path that goes in front of the house. And we're actually removing that path and making it wider. So free brick. Now on this side of the path, 
can see uh, when I did a video a month and a half ago maybe, I was planting up the cottage garden. And these are all seedlings that I grew, uh, started out in the house. And you can see they're all filling in. This all, there, there will not be any soil showing once these are all up. All the dahlias are coming along well. They've all been pinched back. We have dahlias. You want to make sure that you pinch out the center after it's got about three sets of leaves and then it's going to start pushing side growth. It's going to make for a much bushier plant and more blooms. The sweet peas are actually starting to bloom. They're actually starting to bloom. They're definitely growing. In the last video, they were barely five inches tall and now they're growing. I was worried that I planted them so late um, that they would just be killed by the heat. But we don't have any heat yet. And so they're they're loving this weather. And they're starting to bloom and we may get a good bit of uh, bloom out of them. So coming up here a little further, if you watched my weeding video on Friday, this area no longer looks like an overgrown mess. Still got a bit of construction-y stuff here, but I did get two of the espaliered apple trees planted, and this one definitely needs its support. Poor thing, They're, the apples are getting heavy and weighing the branches down, so it's a weeping apple at this point. So I gotta get the supports in here to hold these uh, horizontally. This one doesn't have fruit, so it's doing okay. So we'll have one here and two here. So this little vegetable garden area will be bordered by a little living fence of apple trees. And this year we're gonna have uh, pumpkins in here. I've got lots of pumpkins in the garage coming up, different kinds of pumpkins and gourds and things. And then in this area uh, will eventually be a little cottage vegetable garden as well. Good morning, girls. Good morning. But take a look at these uh, clearance roses from Lowe's. This is Perfume Breeze, and if you could smell them, you would know why it's called that. They smell so good. And look at this wonderful thing. I'm giving that to the chickens. So our uh, blackberries are either blooming or this guy's my friend right here. You see the blue jay? He follows me around the garden. I've been feeding him peanuts. And uh, anyway, so we do have lots of blooms on these little plants and little berries if you look closely. This variety is Ponca. And this variety is Olali, which is the one I grew up with. And we definitely have berries on here. Raspberries are taking their own sweet time. Not sure why they're growing so slowly. Well, maybe because they're just little sprouts that I planted that came up from our last house that I brought here. That's probably why. All right, we're going to leave the cottage garden now and head down to the vegetable garden. The mountains have been covered like this for at least the past four or five days and most of the days in May, which I'm not complaining. I, ha I came from a cooler coastal spot last year. Summer here seemed pretty hot comparatively. So let's push this cool weather out. I'm okay with it because I've got lots of work to do and uh, it's better to do it in this weather than in 90 degree hot sun. So something else that would have been on the Homestead channel is Noah and I finished this, this wall here. Just needs the capstones on top. But look at this. I also completed the stairway. Just needs the capstones. But we've got two sets of stairs. Now I purposely am leaving some space between each of these stairs to plant some erigeron. And I'll put a picture up here of what erigeron is and how it grows. So the first thing I want to show you is our potatoes. We have a bed over there that just came up from ones I accidentally left last season. But then this bed here, we planted uh, I did a video, and what I'm really excited about, you know, you don't know how these are doing. We do have some that are a little bit diseased. But take a look. Oh, there's another one. But take a look. This is, on this half of the bed was our Ruth Stout method. 
I'll put a link to this video down below, but yeah, the snails are eating these too. Ugh. But the roost out method is basically setting your potatoes on the ground, not burying them, not planting them, no back breaking work, and then covering them with straw. Let's take a look. Look at this. Potatoes just sitting on top of the ground waiting to be harvested. I mean, that's crazy. I've never done this before. Now, they're not ready yet, but it's totally working. Here, I'm doing a little test with some carrots. I'm always trying to find the best way to grow carrots. Carrots, probably, if you live in a moist climate, if humidity or you get a lot of rain, it's probably the easiest thing in the world to grow because once they've germinated and, and they're growing, uh, they pretty much you know take care of themselves. But here with our dry climate, uh, it's hard to get carrots to germinate because they don't like to be covered over with much and they need constant moisture. And so I have to be out here maybe two times a day or more if it's later in the year, watering carrots. And so I tried some shade cloth last season and that worked pretty well. But this year I'm trying, I made little tiny rills and sprinkled the seed in and covered them with vermiculite, which covers them over and keeps the moisture in, but lets light through. And then in this section here, I used uh, just some pine shavings to mulch with. They're not covered with anything else but that. So uh, I will let you know how those work. I'll keep you updated. So down here, all of the lettuce I have taken out and harvested, and this is where uh, the garlic was as well. And I showed you what the garlic was doing, how it was, you know, growing thick and multiple stems. And the only thing I can think of is that it was all the rain we had this year, which I thought was gonna do it good, but instead it made the clumps look like this rather than what traditional garlic is supposed to look like. Now it's still edible, but um, I don't know that it's going to keep that long. So I may have to chop it up and freeze it or dry it and make garlic powder. I have some overwintered peppers here that are actually coming out of it. I wasn't sure if they were going to after the cold that we had, but they are uh, starting to grow again. These are Anaheim peppers. The chives are still looking good. This is just like letting me know I need to plant more chives because these look so good here. I love the combination with the sweet alyssum. Doesn't that look nice? And then the, the purpley color with the orange of the nasturtiums look great as well. It is time to harvest the fennel. So I'll be doing that, but I'm going to leave some because if you watched my companion planting video from, what, a week ago or so, I think it was a flower Friday, you know that this is a great attractant for a lot of beneficial insects as well as this parsley that I'm letting go to flower. Both of those, I will be removing most of it, but I will be leaving some here. And you can see right there, ladybug. And there's another one over there. And there's one right there. So go back and watch that video. Um, zucchini is growing away. We've got lots. This is, oh, and we've got somebody eating on it. Probably a squirrel. But this is Dunha. D-U-N-G-A, D-U-N-J-A. And what I'm loving about these so far is they're not growing super fast, the actual fruit. So that could just be the lack of heat we have here. I'll be able to tell probably in a month or so when it actually warms up. But they're not going from tiny to massive in a day and a half. And then on this side, we've got some yellow squash. This is Golden Glory. This here is, is uh, Something that is solar and produces electricity, supposedly goes in the ground, stimulates the roots. I had never heard of this before. It was sent to me by a company to trial. So I'm trialing it. So far, I haven't noticed the difference. I'll keep you updated on that though. Right next to the zucchini are my climbing beans and they're doing well. I started these uh, in the garage from seed. And then right across the path are my bush beans. This is dragon tongue. And we've got dill working away here. Dill is the same as the fennel and the um, parsley. They are an umbellifer flower, an umble flower, which means they look like umbrellas with tons and tons of little flowers in there. 
and we have a ladybug right here. Uh, ladybug larva everywhere this year, which is amazing. If I can find one, I'll show it to you. If not, I'll put it on the screen because lots of people in our Facebook group are putting this picture of this bug and saying, what is this bug? It's actually a ladybug larva, so don't kill it. It's a good guy. It actually eats more aphids and little bad bugs than the adult ladybugs. So in this mass of nasturtiums, we have our onion bed, and they have bulbed up so much more since the last video. And I told you last time that the front half, or maybe front, front third of this section, I plucked the leaves off because supposedly that makes larger bulbs. I'm not so sure because they are, the largest bulb is the one way back here. Look at that. Compared to my hand, it's a good size onion. So I'm not sure I'm going to do that anymore. And then I also know that if you spoon your onion, which means take the soil away from the edge of it, it allows it to expand more. At least that's the thought. And that might work in like heavier soil. This soil, though, it's so light that that's not going to make a difference. So I'm not doing that. Uh, if I ever grow onions in our native soil, I might try it and then I'll let you know. If you guys have, if you guys know, uh, if you've tried that and it's worked for you, put it down in the comments. I'd like to know. Another experiment I'm doing is with sweet potatoes. Now, I know we are supposed to grow sweet potatoes from slips. That's what we're all told. You don't plant the potato like a normal potato. So we're going to find that out this year. These are all slips that I started. And these are all that sprouted that were left in here accidentally and came up. So I removed them. I fertilized them. I amended the soil the same way as over here. Uh, and then I planted them back spaced out correctly. And there's some that are just now starting over here. And then some that are growing a little bit more over on this side. So hopefully by the end of this year, I'll be able to report to you wh whether we need to take the extra step of, you know, growing the slips from the potato and then cutting them off and then rooting them. Because if you don't have to do that, it's going to save a lot of time and hassle. Up here on this top bed, we've got our cucumbers in. I'm going to be growing them up. My tomato hooks, like I did last year, gets them up off the ground, away from more of the pests that eat them on the ground. And you can plant more in a smaller space because you're taking advantage of vertical space rather than just horizontal on the ground. The tomato bed is prepped and ready. The peas are gone, except for some that are volunteering themselves. And you guys probably all have your tomatoes planted already. I'm probably later than anybody. <laughs> Let me know down below if you're still uh, waiting to put in your tomatoes. It's warm enough. They're fine. Um, I've just had so many things going on that just keeps get, getting put off. So I'll be doing that uh, this week, probably to, uh, tomorrow, and then I'll probably have it on Tomato Tuesday. Let's have Tomato Tuesday on Tuesday. Those of you who have been with me a while, you remember Tomato Tuesday. Maybe we'll bring that back. What do you think? And then we've got our asparagus, which is growing nicely. This is its first year, so you don't harvest it on its first or really second year. Um, because you want it to keep producing little spikes. But more importantly, these little spikes draw in the sun uh, and photosynthesize to help grow those strong roots that are going to keep producing asparagus for years. The espaliers are doing well. I haven't started espaliering the fig yet. We need a lot more lateral growth, which it's put on a lot of growth just in the last month. So we can start training that probably later in the year. Look at this climbing rose. It just had buds all over it last on the last tour. This is Don Juan. Not only is it a beautiful rose, it smells so good. And in the herb garden, the Mediterranean herb garden, I'm still leaving both of these garas here, but they just, they're so unruly. They look good. I'm just thinking they don't look good for this space when everything else is nicely manicured mounds. And then our artichokes are coming along. They're way bigger than they were in the last tour. And then here is the nursery. Hardening off these peppers. But I've got dahlias and strawberries. Here's all of my tomatoes. They're so ready to be put in the ground. Look, I've even got tomatoes already growing out of these cups. But cannas, 
more dahlias. This fig tree is doing really well. It's put on a lot of new growth. Look at all that, that length of new growth it's put on. This is just within the last two months, all of this length. Now we're moving into the future tropical garden and there is some activity going on here. I spent some time this week actually mapping out. I had it on paper, but then I like to map things out using spray paint, using cords, extension cords, hoses. I like to live with it a little bit to make sure that I'm gonna like the way it looks because on paper, it looks one way, but actually having it three, and in my mind, it looks like it would work, but I like to have things drawn out so that when I walk through here, I'm seeing if these paths are wide enough, um, if they have the right, you know, natural turns for walking. But yes, this huge area is all going to be tropical garden. And we're going to be starting this uh, probably late June, early July. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this green extension cord that goes around. This is going to be our large pond. It's, big, it's a big pond. This is probably four times, five times the size of any pond I've ever had. And then a stream is going to go back that way. There's going to be a lot of rock work back here. If you remember my old house, I had a lot of that rock work with a large six-foot waterfall there. Now, we do have a road here. And it doesn't get tons of traffic, but there is a nursery at the end of our road, um, a huge nursery, like a growing ground. And so dump trucks and delivery trucks come by here and they're loud. It's not all the time, but so I want to have a, a, a large enough waterfall there to make that water noise to kind of just be white noise to drown that out. Everywhere you see a pot is going to be some kind of tree either palm trees or, you know, some other type of tropical tree. So this will be a jungle. They're gonna grow up. I'm gonna, these eucalyptus will be a nice green backdrop. Over here, our cannas are getting completely just decimated by, I'm guessing, earwigs. They, they start when the, the, the leaf comes out curled up like this, so they just start eating through it. And then it looks like this when they open. So I've got to get some Sluggo Plus over here and take care of that issue. And then the uh, Sun Patients from last year that we cut back a few months ago, um, they're growing back. So I'm happy to see that. Then over here, we got the gingers, the Colocasia. This is white ginger here. And then around this side, we've got all of our Monsteras. Two days ago, we went to a nursery in Fallbrook or Bonzel. I'm not sure which one, but if you live in that area or southern Riverside County, northern San Diego County, it's a great nursery. They've got avocados and citrus and mangoes. Very knowledgeable, very helpful. And if you guys remember a few months ago, a gopher took out the avocado tree that I planted right after we moved in here. And I didn't know exactly how to protect them at that time. I do now. And so... I have a brand new avocado tree to plant right here in the same hole that I had to remove the last one. This is a reed avocado and it is R-E-E-D. Now, the idea here is I'm gonna have three avocado trees, not because they need to be pollinated, because they don't, and my neighbor has one across the way if it does, but, um, and I'll do a whole video on this when I plant it in case you guys are looking to plant uh, and grow avocados, but. Uh, the three that I'm choosing are Reed, uh, Haas, and the third one is slipping my mind right now. I'll put it on the screen. But with those three avocados, they produce at different times of the year. So basically, when they're all producing, I'll have avocados 365 days out of the year. Every month, there'll be something producing. Heading back up to England now. The one last thing I want to show you. Man, doesn't that roof look good? I love it. Anyway, um, we have been bringing in dump truck after dump truck of fill dirt here. And Bill has been moving it around. And the idea here is this is going to make a berm that comes all the way around here, all the way back up to where you see these pots. And then this 
center area, there's gonna be, there will be trees planted all along the berm to give us privacy and a nice backdrop here. And then between me and the berm, there's gonna be a wildflower meadow with a large pond in the middle. And that's gonna do a couple of things. That's going to not only be a nice pond and a nice wildflower meadow to help with all of our beneficial insects. Um, you know, wildflower meadows are declining rapidly all over the world, really. And so it's a great thing just for that, but it's also gonna be the start of our water catchment system. We'll have an upper pond, and this is thinking far into the future, upper pond first, uh, there'll be a spillway into a lower pond, and then they'll, at the very bottom, there will be a swale. And so with all the rain that, like we got last year, it all just went barreling down through this little gulch that we have here on the side of our property and out into the street and out into the ocean. And so the idea is to catch that rainwater in the upper ponds and then any further overflow will go into the lower pond or the, the swale, which is just a depression mainly uh, that holds water and it will allow it to go back down into the groundwater instead of just heading out to the ocean and wasting it. And then we'll be putting in a well so we'll be able to pump that water out that we've stored um, and not have to rely so much on, you know, the, the, the city water. So that's the tour. I hope you guys are having a great Memorial Day weekend. Let's remember why this weekend is a, a national holiday um, and remember all of those who lost their lives protecting our country. All right, guys, I will see you next time.